So David Reese jones thanks so much for doing this, mate. No, not a problem. Pleasure. I've, I've actually seen a few of them, Sam. Which, and uh, Which ones have you seen? Uh, I saw the Bruce Dool one, and that was sensational. Not much said, of I, course. I, but I, I couldn't <laughs> get a word in, right? It was unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. 1985, you arrive at Carlton. So 1985 to 92, you're there. 106 games. How did you end up from Sydney to Carlton? What happened there that first season? At the end of 1984, I, I had a decision to make of what I wanted to do, and... Um, and I basically rang my accountant and, and said, can you speak to Hawthorne and Carl? He basically got back to me and said, financially, it's going to be a lot better for you going to Carlton. So oh God, you just... I went and spoke to Carlton. And so they organised a meeting that afternoon with uh, David Parkin, spoke to him, and um, that was it. Oh, I actually signed with them within a day. A day? And so my, yeah, I just said, you just sent shutters up my uh, spine, Reese. That in '86 and '87 Grand Finals, that you could have been in the brown and gold. '85 yeah. was the hardest year of football I've ever had. Why was that? And um, well, you, you're going from a club that's struggling to a Premiership club, and you know you got triple Premiership players running around the in, the in in the twos at that stage. So it was a culture shock for you coming from South Melbourne to Carlton. Who uh, some of the names uh, in those early years at Carlton that were uh, that were supportive, Reese? Oh look, I, I was always good mates with um, you know Wayne Johnson and Mark McClure and, and Jimmy Buckley were probably the three main ones. It's, who, it's very surprising that you just gravitated towards those three. Races. Yeah, well, they they enjoyed a lot of uh, the off-field activities that I enjoyed, and, and uh, birds of a feather, I suppose. <laughs> On behalf of all Carlton supporters, though, Reese, what a shout that is! You, David Reese Jones, Mark <laughs> McClure, Jimmy Buckley, and Wayne Johnson. Is it just is it just is it just pots or? Uh, what about when you went to the uh, so when you went to the next level? Yeah, well, yeah, you, you'd have to at some stage. You can only drink so much beer, can't you? But uh, what was well, your no, then again, if, if you're Jimmy, you can just keep going. But uh, what was it when you went to the hardest stuff? I always Reese, went to the Scotch, it? Scotch and Coke, yeah, Great. yeah the Scotch and Coke, and then the, the Mark McClure and milk at the end, I suppose, was <laughs> just to top it off. The Mark McClure and milk, yeah, all yeah, right, the old McClure oh. and milk. That's, right. that's when you knew, you know, the end was near. Yeah. Well, good, good idea to put a lining on your stomach at the end of the night rest. <laughs> very, very good idea. What's the uh, memory of your debut for Carlton? My debut for Carlton was probably more memorable for um, for someone else's debut for Footscray. And, and, and I was playing on a half forward flank and um, I was out on that half forward flank for the whole time and on my own and uh, no one come near me from the opposition. Anyway, after the game, um, David Parkins got us all in the room at the end and he's looked around and he said, and who was playing on Brad Hardy? That Brad Hardy, he's killed us today. Who was playing on him? And I've looked around and I, I said, well, I wasn't playing on anyone, so it was probably me. <laughs> that was, and that he was got your defence. He got three votes for that and that probably helped him win the Brownlow medal that year. So uh, uh, Brad owes me. And you finished with Parkin as well, so you had one year with Parkin and then yeah. you know you were still at him when he came back. the last year of his first stint, yeah. and the first year of his last stint, yeah. How, and how, how was he with you? How did you get on? Because oh, I can I, can I, I was, can I wasn't I a very coachable person, and, and <laughs> I, I probably went against everything David Parkin stands for. I was a drinker and a smoker and, uh, and I liked a good time, so... Uh, I remember, as a Carlton supporter, in your last year, just going, why isn't Reese playing? Why isn't Reese playing? And I, and I, this is what sticks in my mind is that David Parkin in the press was asked about David Reese Jones, and Parkin would always say that David Reese Jones is in our best 18. He's in our best 18. And I remember you saying once, and tell me if it's, you know, it's urban myth, but I remember you being quoted as saying, that's great to know that David thinks I'm in the best 18. Can you tell me when he's going to start playing his best 18? <laughs> Do you remember saying something like that, Reese? Well, well, I probably would have. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty. Uh, I just say it as it is, and, and I always have done. How old were you when you retired? Uh, Thirty. It's a young 30, man. Thirty, so yeah. Not many people retired. I mean, everyone got the tap on the shoulder as Wes or, or, or Parker or, or whoever. <laughs> I was actually, I was actually with Jimmy Buckley the day he got um, he got tiptoed when we had to go over to Parko's place, and I, I was in the car and I, I hid under the. He done under the dashboard because I thought I didn't want him to see me. He might have got rid of me at the same time. So. I know you said you're uncoachable. That'll come yep. as no surprise to anyone. Was Wolsey a good coach for you though? Did he appreciate your skills and what he had, mate? Did he get the best out of you? Yeah. Well, look, we we had what you call a hate hate relationship, I suppose. <laughs> and, 
<laughs> and um, and we didn't like each other too much. And, and, and a lot of that, once again, was um, uh, Wolsey was a school teacher and I hated school. So, and so was Parker. So I was, I was up against it before I started. And uh, I, I wasn't the most uh, teachable person, you, I suppose. You so. know, when you put it like that, is it, it's, it kind of all makes sense that these iconic teams of the 80s, all through the 80s, had great players, characters though, mm -hmm. and the club in their wisdom saw fit to put kind of school teachers in charge of it, <laughs> in charge of naughty kids. And, and in some ways I think we needed that. Yeah. And, uh, for a lot of it, I, I played in spite of Wolsey, I, I wanted to shove it up him, so I, he didn't intimidate me as much. I, I was probably getting on with Wolsey better in 89 than I had in the entire time before that, yep. and they sacked him. When Robert threw me back in '87 in that grand final on, on the Burton, and I think that um, probably, I reckon him and me were the only two people who thought that would have worked. Yeah, as um, and yet there was a surprise to me. It was a shock to me. But uh, did you know in the in the week leading up, Reece, I found out the Thursday night. So just the normal go in the room, and there it is on the board, and. Oh well, that's it. That's what that's my job this this week. I found out later that um, I think there's what five or six on my match committee, and 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 Walsy was the only one who voted for it. So everyone else on the match committee said no. But on the Thursday night, they said, "Well, you're the coach, and you know if you want to go ahead with this, that's it, sort of thing." And 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 thank God he did. Yeah. Otherwise, I'd probably just be known as that dickhead who got reported 25 times. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> probably wouldn't even be in the car with me. The rest wouldn't have even bothered. Yeah, the, uh, exactly. lucky, so in hindsight, Lucky Wolsey's vote in the match committee counted for six votes. Uh, Reese, isn't that good to find yeah, out? Yeah. Um, so, I, don't even, I didn't even bother, mate. I had too much respect. I wanted to talk about other things. But, <laughs> how, many, how many times reported? I was only 25 reported. <laughs> and I was, I was up there. <laughs> 25 times the umpire stopped blew the whistle and like looked yeah, at the yeah. 25 and, times and wasn't that ridiculous why, why did they have to turn around and look at your number I think they knew by then they knew, I reckon they had it written in the notepad before the game started <laughs> and they just wrote what I did 25 times Reese. that's yeah, a lot was, of time. that's a lot man it was I, I put it this way I didn't plan many events on Monday nights any injustices in there Reese? oh no no there's probably a few <laughs> more that should have been in there but uh no, look, I, I was I was guilty every time. It was just, but it was. It, it, I don't know. I, I got it fourteen times. Yeah, that was so. A I good was strike, I right? was uh, I was pretty good in the tribunal. I you know I remember the first time I got reported. It was with South Melbourne, and they actually um, I didn't have a suit. They went and bought me a suit. They made me get my hair cut. They dressed me up like a choir boy, basically, and <laughs> sent me in there. And yeah. I was like this kid, and you know, butter wouldn't melt in his mouth. This skinny kid, and they're going. I think I got reported, you know, five times in that match, but. In the tribunal looking at me going, how could this young fellow, you know, possibly do that? Anyway, they ended up giving me four weeks in the run of that day. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's name is Peter Smith, he's a Melbourne runner, who happened to be Norm Smith's son. Well, he deserved it then, he deserved it then. <laughs> what about that, you know? That's I whacked his kid and won his medal. <laughs> the circle of life. That's it. The 87 grand final. Yes, you win the Norm Smith, and it's a great day. But I remember, like Jono kicked the first two goals. He knocked out Dipper. He didn't. He didn't yep. let the umpire bounce the ball. He did all yep. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you win the Norm Smith. It was like a perfect day for me. But did you feel good all day? Uh, you know, throughout the game. What are your memories of it? Well, you, you never felt good against Hawthorne. It wasn't until about the 15 minute mark of the last quarter where I, I think I yelled at one of our players, and you know, get back and pick him up, or you know, something like that. And Dermot actually turned around and said to me. What are you worried about, mate? You've, you've won the game. Right. You know, it was such a hot day, and but grand finals being grand finals, you know, you, you, you just got to keep going to that final siren blows. And I still think the game is pretty simple, and um, I just think that some people try and make the game too hard. And uh, at the end of the day, it's only a game. Yeah. Get out there, put the ball through the goals more than the opposition, get the score on the board, win the game. It's pretty simple. Well, David Rhys Jones, you're a you're a great character, but also a great player of the Colton Football Club. And uh, mate, thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate no, it. No problems at all. No, thank you, Sam. Thanks, Ben. A treat. Four weeks for hitting the runner. <laughs> True story.